is exiting the freeway at Hollywood Boulevard, and we'll see if he goes uh, east or west, either into the heart of Hollywood or into the uh, East Hollywood and Little Armenia area, acting like he's going to go towards the left, and that is what he's doing. So he's going to head towards uh, the East oh. Hollywood area. Unless, well, let's see, maybe he's going to rejoin the freeway again, zigzagging around. Uh, well, he had the option to uh, rejoin the 101. Let's, uh, I'll try to get around these buildings here. Eastbound on Hollywood Boulevard, obviously one of the uh, busiest streets in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and uh, he can take this over uh, towards Vermont, possibly, the uh, Los Feliz area. We'll uh, see where he goes here, having some trouble with some buildings. Uh, can we try to get to the other side here? Well, the good news so far, go. at least, this, is this. that it doesn't appear there are any crashes or injuries. As a is he stopping? Nope, he's going around those cars. At this point, it doesn't seem like yeah. he has caused any crashes, but obviously that could still happen. It is very oh, dangerous right oh. now that this person is still just going very, very fast, up to 100 miles per hour now on surface streets in Hollywood. A lot of people out yeah, Sunday well, night. I I, yeah, I certainly hope he has his sirens on because we have, you know, a lot of people out walking around. Okay, he's making a turn down a, a small residential street uh, in, the, in the Hollywood area. So now we're northbound away from Hollywood Boulevard back up towards Franklin. Uh, a very, very dense area here. Lots of lots of apartment buildings. Uh, you can see by all the cars parked here. Very narrow streets here. So a very, very dangerous situation here. Now I believe he is eastbound. Oh, this is going to be Franklin. Uh, eastbound on Franklin now headed towards the Los Feliz area. A tough position for police right now because at some points, Desmond, we were talking about how police kind of take a step back because they don't want to put the public's safety in jeopardy. However, this is a police cruiser, so they don't want to let this car go. Uh, so what do they no. do at this point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your guess, your guess is as good as mine. This is a very delicate uh, situation for sure. Uh, obviously, they're going to want to recover their, their vehicle, but, you know, they have to wonder uh, what kind of weapons might might be uh, in, inside the vehicle. Okay, we're now turning mm. uh, northbound again away from Franklin. This is going to be up now towards the Hollywood Hills area uh, into uh, a very, very nice residential street as he uh, heads north, kind of kind of heading towards the Hollywood side now at this point. And very narrow streets. Mm -hmm. so you got to wonder how this is all going to play out. Yeah, very, very narrow streets. And, and again, you know, I, I, I don't know if he has his sirens on at this point, but just for, for the safety of everybody around him, I certainly hope that he does. That stolen car again now heading towards the Hollywood Hills area uh, in Los Feliz right now, still blowing through stop signs and intersections, still driving very recklessly and very fast. Um, and that's the, the problem here is that we don't know how this is going to end or if there is a destination that this driver is trying to get to. But it appears that this guy is just going as fast and as dangerous as possible and has no intention of stopping or slowing down. Yeah, and you, you know what, and then we are now on Los Feliz. Uh, it looks like he is going to be east on Los Feliz. That was just Vermont, a uh, major street that we just crossed over. So now he will be heading back towards the 5 Freeway and the uh, Glendale area here, eastbound on Los Feliz. That is uh, Hillcrest, I believe, that we just passed over. And uh, now using the center divider to get around traffic, Los Feliz, another very, very busy street at any time of the afternoon or evening. And you can see that he just blew through another red light. But again, the good news in all of this, we can hear at times sirens actually going, and you see the lights there. So cars are getting out of their way. Yeah, cars are definitely getting out of the way, and uh, that's that's really the, the only positive thing about this. But you just really incredible speeds on, on surface streets and on freeways at this point. And he will be approaching the F5 freeway here pretty quickly, eastbound on Los Feliz as we head towards the uh, Glendale and Atwater Village area. You know, I have to say, this may be one of the most nerve-wracking and confusing chases that we have seen in quite some time. Desmond, do we know anything more about this suspect, how he got into this vehicle to begin with? No, we, uh, we still don't have that information for you. It's just, uh, yeah, I, I got to say, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen uh, in any of my time covering this chases uh, a, a police vehicle that has, has been used against the police here uh, in a chase. And as, as we were saying, uh, quite possibly weapons inside this vehicle. So even if they can uh, bring the chase to an end, then what's going to happen after that if, if, if this suspect is possibly armed? Again, this all started possibly in the Walnut area. What you're looking at, the lead cruiser there is actually a stolen police cruiser, possibly out of the West Covina area. And we've been monitoring this chase now for a good uh, 35 minutes or so. 
Luckily, no cars, no people have been hit so far because those sirens and lights have been on. But this car going at speeds up to 70 to 100 miles an hour, not just on the freeway, but on city side streets like you're looking at right now. Yeah, and we are eastbound. We are still eastbound on Los Feliz. We saw him cross over the F5 freeway uh, not too long ago. So he's in the uh, Atwater Village area now at this point and headed towards uh, Glendale. And uh, he will be uh, coming up, I believe, to Central Avenue here pretty quickly. Uh, so right into the heart of Glendale. And uh, he will have quite a few options at this point. Another red light obviously just, just blew through there. That's probably, uh, you know, the, the 20th or so, several dozen. Uh, vehicles he's blown through. This is now Central. He's headed northbound on Central, so he will be uh, headed up towards a very busy area of uh, of, the, of the Glendale area, and the next freeway up there will be the uh, 134 freeway. This is very nerve-wracking to watch. This suspect just zigzagging across the area with the LA County Sheriff's deputies in pursuit. Again, just not showing any sign of stopping or slowing down. You can just see him blowing through all those intersections and all those stoplights. Still going freeway speeds on surface streets here now in Glendale. Desmond, what options do police have? What can they do to possibly stop this guy? Well, we were, you know, we were hoping that we were going to see a, a, a pit maneuver or something earlier. But when you're traveling at these kind of speeds, it's very difficult to 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 pull off a maneuver like that. I mean, you, you know, you're, you're thinking if, if this suspect, especially on surface streets, if this suspect is traveling, you know, at 60, 70, 80 miles an hour on the surface street, then how fast does the officer have to go mm -hmm. in order to uh, to pull off a maneuver like that? So we're now going by the Americana at Brand, a very uh, busy shopping mm -hmm. center that actually should be shut down at this point. Mm -hmm. But uh, he is northbound on Central, just crossed through Colorado right there, uh, right in the heart of the Glendale area. And we will be upon the uh, 134 freeway here pretty quickly. Yeah, so the options are pit maneuvers, which are very difficult to do at this point at those speeds and, and spike strips. But again, this person is okay, turning uh, quarters, uh, making twists and turns, going on freeways and getting on city streets. So there's really no way to use spike strips because we don't know where this person's going to end up. Yeah, yeah, and he just uh, made an eastbound turn there, north uh, or uh, east, eastbound away from the Glendale Galleria. So he's now paralleling the uh, 134, and the next major street is going to be Glendale Avenue here for uh, this chase, which again started back in the San Gabriel Valley, on the eastern edge of the San Gabriel Valley. We had heard it starting around Fairway and Valley in the Walnut area, covered a lot of a lot of territory in a very short amount of time. Uh, traveling at these speeds. It actually seems like he's slowed down a little bit within the last five minutes, but not too much. I believe that's Glendale Avenue there that we just crossed. So uh, still headed eastbound and will at this rate be into the Eagle Rock area pretty quickly, but now he's uh, just made another northbound turn. So we are now northbound headed towards the uh, Glendale Freeway, or rather the uh, Ventura Freeway, I should say, the 134, and back westbound again. Obviously incredibly erratic. Yeah, and we've also yeah, seen whenever the police get close, the suspects swerve. So it's also very difficult for them to try to attempt that pit maneuver. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, it, it almost seems like he's uh, been anticipating it. And we're coming back to Glendale Avenue, I believe, unfortunately, we're getting pretty close to some low clouds here as well. Going to try to keep the uh, shot and get it behind some buildings here. And I believe we're coming up on the 134. Mm. You can see those officers behind getting real close. It looks like they're going to do a pit maneuver, and then they, either they back off or the suspect well, takes off again. And there's another turn. Yeah. Now here we go. Here oh, we go. I think bucked, this is going to be there it. Is. This is it. He, he turned into a he turned into oh. a dead end parking lot, and there's the pit maneuver. They've spun him around, and they're going to try to box him in here. And uh, let's see what happens, and, and just hope that uh, that he doesn't have access to any weapons in there. Oh no, he's oh. not giving up. Oh, this guy no. is refuses to give up. Now in reverse, trying to get out of this parking lot uh, in the uh, Glendale area, pretty close to the 134. Oh, oh. Wow, just slamming in there, just slammed in right into the driver's side. He might have been injured after that one. Looks like it definitely did a number to this police cruiser That's as well. Smoking. And mm -hmm. uh, you can see all that smoke there. They've got they've got the the, the both of them probably have got their their wheels going in opposite directions. That's a, a lot of rubber burning there. And uh, we've got officers obviously out now with uh, with their their weapons drawn. And we will let's see how this uh, 
turns out here. Wow. And again, we don't know if wow, there wow, are wow. weapons, what kind of weapons there are in that stolen cruiser. So I'm sure police are very you can see concerned about that. authorities are now out of their vehicles with weapons drawn, yeah. pointing towards this is the stolen very, cruiser. very delicate situation now at this point. Um, and, and we don't know. He, the, the, the suspect could very, very easily have been seriously injured at this point. Or, I mean, that, that impact was, was really, mm. really mm. hard. So it's it's entirely possible he who, he could be incapacitated at this point. We uh, we don't know. A very very delicate situation now. But yes, officers all out in force now, uh, and weapons drawn. We'll just have to see how how this plays out here in the next couple and of minutes. We don't know again if that suspect has access to any weapons inside that police cruiser, which could make this even more tense for those officers trying to figure out what to do. Absolutely, that's really the concern at this point. I'm sure. They, they, they have to they have to know that there's a very high possibility of, of, of there being weapons in there and we don't know the mental state of the suspect at this point and so we it's it's really really hard to, to discern what's going to happen now it's so dark out there Desmond it's really hard to see from our vantage point I, I can't really see officers I can see a little bit of movement but what's happening out there yeah they, they, we've we've got officers out here you can see they've they've, they've kind of taken cover around what looks like this parking structure and they've got their weapons drawn and they i'm sure are giving uh commands to the suspect telling him to get out of the vehicle with his hands up uh, but again after we we saw that that incredible impact there from that cruiser that suv that slammed it right into the driver's side of that crown victoria so it's it's hard to say they're now moving in so he may be complying with their orders he might not very, be able to get out. He has to, he has to get out of pro probably out of the passenger side. Yeah, well, that's that's yeah, that's 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 for sure. He will have to get out of the passenger side if 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 he 